and boom, we're live. Welcome, folks, to the American Movement Podcast. Today, we're going over, this is an extraordinary book. It is Hamburgers in Paradise. So it's kind of a, it's an um, interesting title. So it's reference to the hamburger itself is this iconic or epitome of Western culture and excess and globalization. So it's, you get the bread, the patty, whatever. And so it is uh, luxury. And so there's this paradise within, and there's this always been this cultural and even religious uh, idea of paradise. So she references Adam and Eve and how they are shot out of paradise once they uh, commit the cardinal sin of eating the forbidden fruit, and then they are um, put into chaos. And so now they have to retain all of their knowledge and get knowledge. So she runs parallel with that. And this is just an extraordinary book. And if you want to know, if you want to know the current situation of food, and then you not only get the culture aspect, and it's not only Western culture, it's Eastern culture, and then the history of those Eastern cultures and references to this. And then it runs parallel with um, just the uh, globalization of all the food and the chains and global globalized food chains. There is uh, evolutionary insights in here with how the food is going going about and circling the globe and then um physiological like nutrition and stuff like that so it was it was just so dense so this is not for the faint of heart it's so dense but it's like this book i think is 40 bucks but it's like there's so much information in here it's like it could be triple that you know so i love this book um she is a great writer and she's very very knowledgeable so she will call one very cool thing is that she will Create the the baseline content that you're talking that she's referencing, and then she will bring in historical facts, and then she will bring in religious facts, and then she will tie it in to how our we crave it physiologically or through the evolution of um, the scarcity that we have always had up until this very brink in time. So this time she references us being in paradise in this abundance, and now within the most affluent countries, we have to, we are suffering from too much abundance. We are suffering from the absolute results of uh, OCB, what, obesogenic circumstances. So it's so cool, man. And I love learning about this. I love, I think food is the foundational thing that we, in order to get great art, someone has to have time to create that art. And so that is one reference too that she goes after. She talks about biotechnology of food. She talks about the, um, organic versus uh, sustainable versus um, large industrial farms. And so if you don't want to get into this one, but you still want to be a part or like learn more about it, and there's a less dense book, this is how I learned from learned about this book, Hamburgers in Paradise. This The book that referenced this book is Resetting the Table. If you read Resetting the Table and you like that one and you want more to chew on, this is the book to go for. And so I loved it. I mean, she's an incredible writer. She's so knowledgeable and you just get mind blown after mind blown. Like I found myself having to stop. Like I'd read it and then stop. And I just have to think about like what is going on just because there's so much information laid in throughout just small, just in within even paragraphs. And then there will be throwaway statements that have just enormous potency where it was similar to like, oh, so she was talking about scarcity and um, religion. And so there was religious face and you, she was like, do you think it's serendipitous that fasting comes right between uh, winter and spring when most of the food scarcity or winter food supplies are depleted? So the, ca- the Catholic Church had created Lent in order to remain um, within its su- food supply surplus. So it was very interesting. That was just a throwaway statement. It's just like, wow, dude. And so she also talks about not only she purports that we just need to understand where food comes from more and quit longing for this peachy um, organic past of food creation. So this industrial farming, it's not visually appealing and it's emotionally um, puts you off because you're you want to have a beautiful farm that has creation and, and it's not clinical. But in order to feed everybody and in order to have this many people, we need this. And if you want to go back to the backbreaking work of digging through clay with plows, go right ahead, but you're going to be left behind. 
you're going to spend an enormous amount of time and labor. And there's no, there is no honor in that labor. And so we need to get past this, this honor of labor. So it's just arduous labor and you don't get to create, like we don't get modern medicine if we don't have the foundational basis of large scale farming in order to feed people. So she also goes into the, there is these, there are misnomers between GMOs. And so GMO, genetically modified organisms, we've always done GMOs. There's always been GMOs, but there is this disdain towards it now that just because it is scientifically and a little bit different, it seems it's so obscure and it's off-putting because it's not natural. So she also goes into that and she goes into the biotechnology of what's going to come forward. So she also talks about the cultural references to meat consumption and the different types of dietary aspects. And that's between the East and the West. And there was so much in here, man. And it was so good. She's an incredible writer. And so I, where's the book at? So I have just, I have made several just notepads and I started doing it at the end of the book. I didn't even do it at the beginning. So the beginning is thick, man. It's just like, you got to go through it. She has several beautiful references to paradise of just um, within artistry of the history or art history. So there's several, it's just such a well done book and this person cares, you know, you can just tell that there is so much effort put into this. So I, I can't recommend it enough. It's one, it is the cool, the last two chapters you will get, it's worth it. Like the last two chapters, if you just want to read the last two chapters, get the book, like it talks about the nutritional content. It talks about how to move forward. It talks about advertising to young children with these ultra processed foods and how it's it's getting banned in a lot of places and we know it's bad. We know we should not be eating ultra processed foods and we know that we shouldn't be advertising to young kids about it because they're, I mean, their cognition just hasn't developed enough to, in order they're impetuous. So they're just running around. They want these high calorie things because evolutionary evolutionarily we were designed in order to just seek out these high energy foods. And so when we have this abundance of this high energy foods, there are, there's just a long-term cascade effect of just, you can get obliterated with obesity if you just eat 500 extra calories a day. So that is, so she wants to give not only information of how all the food is interconnected. And once you get the stories behind how the food got to your table, you, you take more appreciation within it too. So she, that's what she wants to do is not only put it in school, People need to learn, there's, I mean, we learned that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but we don't understand that the consumption of food and how gratifying it is and how pleasurable pleasurable it is and how it's connected to our culture and the history within it too. Just, she goes through, there's an entire chapter of bread in here. So it is just like, it's insanely dense and it's just, it's very, very powerful in this too. So yeah, the last two chapters were just extraordinary. She And here's another throwaway statement. So she's like, the the hamburger has been so iconic and it's just immersed itself in, um, in all cultures that there is a McDonald's in the Louvre. It was put there in 2009. So there's just several things like that. And it's just these throwaway statements that are just mind-blowing that are just strung throughout this as well. And I loved them. So... It's a cool way to think, like she just has an incredible outlook. She, has, she started off with cassava. One of the, like she wrote a book about cassava. She was an agronomist, I believe. And then she just got, she, this is like, it's just so good. So check out Hamburgers in Paradise. I loved it. It's by Luis Fresco, Dr. Luis Fresco. So I encourage you to check it out. And if you have any questions, let me know. Let me know if you read it too as well. So don't forget to subscribe. A lot of good stuff to come. Thank you so much. Matthew Benjamin with the American Movie Podcast. I'll see you next time. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye.